Why do rides have restrictive restraints? Restraints are restrictive for a variety of reasons at every theme park. While every ride is different, almost all modern rides have some form of restraint to safely secure riders during the ride. These restraints are vital for the safety of the rider, as without them, riders could be seriously injured or even killed. Historically, restraints on amusement rides started out as non-moving metal bars and grab handles. As rides became more modern and intense, manufacturers started to make single position lap bars. These are lap bars that only have two positions, locked and unlocked. This worked for a long time and these can still be found on some rides, like many older aero mine trains, but these have the serious disadvantage of taking a one size fits all approach. This means that a child will have several inches of space between them and the lap bar, and many larger or taller adults may not be able to ride the ride at all. To solve this issue and allow for more intense rides, manufacturers introduced over-the-shoulder restraints and multi-position lap bars. These restraints can lock in a number of different positions, allowing for all riders to be secured comfortably and safely. Since then, we have seen more advancements like the addition of seat belts, which are usually used as a secondary restraint or as a device to measure a restraint's minimum verification position. We'll talk more about minimum verification in just a moment. Modern multi-position restraints use hydraulic cylinders that can lock in an infinite number of different positions within the safe range for a restraint. This is often preferable to the older ratcheting style of multi-position restraint that can only lock in around 6 to 10 different positions. This often leads to restraints having a small amount of movement up or down when a rider's size puts them between two ratchets. Many modern rides also feature seat sensors. These are magnetic sensors that can detect if a restraint is down far enough. These are positioned on every single restraint, and if all of them do not verify, a train will not be allowed by the ride's control system to leave the station. On most modern rides, restraints feature a minimum verification position, which is the highest and most open a restraint can be for a rider to safely ride. The minimum verification is determined based on the ride's height requirement, design of the restraints, and forces of the ride. The minimum verification position can be measured in a number of different ways. Through seat sensors, seat belts, or a visual indicator used by a ride operator. As mentioned before, seat sensors are magnetic sensors that can detect if a restraint is positioned properly. If a restraint is higher than the minimum verification position, then the ride's control system will not allow the ride cycle to begin. Seat sensors are becoming more and more common and can be found on most rides built within the last five years, though this is definitely not always true. As discussed previously, seat belts have many different purposes for restraints. On some rides, they are used both as an additional safety restraint, but also as a device to measure the minimum verification position. An example of this is on many older coasters with over-the-shoulder restraints. The over-the-shoulder restraint must be down against the rider and the seat belt must be able to lock. Some rides require the minimum verification position to be enforced visually by the operator. This is usually accomplished by a line painted on the restraint indicating how far it needs to go down. Additionally, some rides with a ratcheting system may require that the restraint be pushed down so many clicks in order for the minimum verification position to be met. This method of verification is usually found on older rides. However, even with modern technology such as seat sensors, some new rides, like many of those made by Intamin, like Velocicoaster, still require the operators to visually verify the restraints to ensure that each restraint is at its minimum verification position. This can lead to problems like what Velocicoaster is currently experiencing, where operators now have to take more time checking restraints to ensure that all riders are safely secured than would otherwise be necessary if the ride used seat sensors. Check out this video by El Toro Ryan for more information. Many rides use a combination of all these systems, leading to a safe experience for millions of riders each year. The proper position of a multi-position restraint is down and touching a rider's body within the minimum verification range. With that being said, two recent and ongoing controversies surround a minimum verification and the proper position of multi-position restraints. The first is the common belief that rides are not designed to be accommodating enough for all riders. This is simply untrue. As mentioned before, multi-position restraints have their minimum verification determined by height requirement, design of the restraints, and forces of the ride. If ride manufacturers were to make restraints larger so that they could accommodate larger riders, they would also have to raise their height requirement making the ride less accessible to riders overall. It's certainly true that some modern restraints are more accommodating than others, but the reason for this can easily be seen when looking at the rides they are attached to. Rides that are less intense or are more traditional in their design, such as sit-down roller coasters, will on average have more accommodating restraints. More unique coasters, such as flying coasters, motorbike coasters, or extremely intense coasters will have less accommodating restraints as a result of this design. 
The second ongoing controversy surrounding restraints involves people, usually ride enthusiasts, attempting to ride with restraints not in their proper position. This is potentially extremely unsafe. Some rides, like modern rides made by RMC and all rides made by B&M, have restraints designed in such a way that as long as a rider meets all ride admission requirements, including height requirement, it's nearly impossible for them to become free of the restraints when they are at their minimum verification position. Still, escape from the ride's restraints at this position is not completely impossible. Many other rides, like most rides made by Intamin, do not have this feature designed in. This makes this behavior extremely unsafe and irresponsible regardless of what ride it's performed on. I personally have seen ride enthusiasts complain about being stapled on rides, but in most cases, this is not a bad thing. It is possible for a restraint to be lowered too far, causing pain, but in most cases, what ride enthusiasts refer to as stapling is riding in the proper, designed riding position. I hope this video provided you the context needed to understand ride restraints and why they're designed the way they are. Many adults forget that rides are designed to accommodate a wide variety of body types, from small children to full-grown adults. This leads to some issues with larger adults riding some rides. But unfortunately, it's often the only way a ride can accommodate smaller riders, who are much more common. Restraints are designed to keep you secure in the ride. Attempting to ride with restraints in anything but their proper position is potentially hazardous and should not be tolerated by enthusiast groups.